Hello and welcome to today's lesson on how do we stop coastal erosion. Just like our other lessons, uh, the idea is that this would be as if we were in a classroom having a normal lesson, not a, a distance one. Um, so you need to complete all the tasks that are on the board. Think about all the questions that we talk about to the best of your ability. So just like in school, we have got five do now questions up on the board. So you need to write the title. The date is whatever day you happen to be doing this work on. And then you need to have a go at the five do now questions. Please make sure you write out the purple sentence in full and then pick whichever correct answer from the gold answers you think is the right one writing the full answer not just the lesson uh, sorry not just the letter I don't know why I said lesson then that's a bit embarrassing um, anyway let's crack on with that task hit pause and when you are finished with the do now task hit play and we'll go through the answers Okay, so number one, problems that affect people are called are called social problems. Oh, yeah. uh, the process where rock or the land is broken down is called erosion. A feature that sticks out into the sea and is created by the sea depositing material is called a spit. For a bay to form, there needs to be soft rock between hard rock. If we had just hard rock, or we had just soft rock, we would get the rock eroding away at the same rate and so it would just be a sort of relatively flat line. We need to have some changes in the rock type for there to be that uneven shape. If we had hard rock between soft rock, then we'd get a headland being formed. Um, number five, a river joins the sea at the mouth. Okay, so spend just 30 seconds checking your answers if you need to, correcting anything with your green pens, please. And then we'll move on in just a moment. Okay, so we're looking today at this question of how do we stop erosion? How do we prevent erosion from happening? We know from last lesson that erosion is a very serious problem. Uh, we saw pictures like these where not only property or housing is about to fall into sea, but other really important things are as well, such as transport links. Uh, we identified a number of problems that erosion caused. Just have a quick think for a second. How did we categorize those problems? We did one of them in the do now questions. What were the other two categories? If you said economic and environmental, you're absolutely right. Economic problems are problems that link to money. So in the picture we're looking at here, this would certainly cause economic problems because people wouldn't be able to get to work or wouldn't be able to get to the shops. So businesses would not do as well as they had in the past. The other category was environmental problems because we mentioned social problems right at the start. And environmental problems are when the environment or nature is suffering as a result of something. So in terms of erosion, erosion can destroy natural habitats and that is affecting the environment and nature, all the different plants and animals and insects and all that kind of stuff that we qualify as nature. So it's a serious problem. How do we deal with it? Well, we picked out a couple of ideas about how to stop erosion last time around. And today we're going to look in more detail at those ideas and see not only if they are effective, but if they cause other problems as well. First thing I'd like you to do is to draw this diagram or table, I should say, really. It's got five columns and six rows. However, my advice is if you're drawing it by hand to just draw it like this where you've not got the rows in yet. And then as you complete your diagram, you can add the rows as you go, just like so. So we go from nothing to one row and then you draw the next line along the bottom. Um, the reason for that is some of these will require a little bit more space than others. So that is the best way to do this task. If you're doing your work on a computer or a laptop, you can obviously draw the uh, table in there and it will get bigger or smaller depending on if you need it to. So let's talk about these columns. The first one we've got is name. 
that's where you're gonna write the name of the way of stopping erosion. Then you're gonna either draw or sketch or copy and paste a picture or a diagram of that form of coastal management. You're gonna include some details about the cost, you're going to describe how it works, and in the end you're going to say a good point or a bad point about it, um, if you think it's going to be really effective or if you can see problems with it. So, draw your diagrams now please, and when you're ready, hit play. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these different forms of coastal management. How do they work, what do they do, and why are they effective, or perhaps even not effective, as we're gonna see in today's lesson. So the first one, we saw this picture last time around. This is what we call beach nourishment. And essentially what you do is deposit lots of sand on the beach. Now you might be thinking, well, how does that work? Well, beaches are actually one of the most effective forms of coastal management there is going. Waves crash onto the land and they will erode the land. Well, beaches are great at absorbing all that energy. When the wave hits the sand, the energy is spread out amongst all the sand and it can all move around and get shaken about and soak up that energy from the wave not the water, just the energy. And when it does that, all that energy is taken out of the wave and it is absorbed by the beach and that protects the land that is further away. So if we look at this picture here, those houses um, that we can see on the right hand side, once that beach is in place, are gonna be well protected. Not only because that beach is probably about 100 meters wide, but also because the beach is so effective at absorbing the energy. So beach nourishment is a relatively easy way to fix coastal management, or oh, sorry, coastal erosion, I should say. It's a relatively easy form of coastal management and an easy solution to coastal uh, erosion. And the way it's done is, is, as you can see in this picture, they've got sort of great big huge pipes of pumping sand, or you can do it with just lorries and diggers, or you can even have boats that will uh, come along and offload sand onto the beach. In either way, uh, in either case, sorry, it is an effective way to manage coastal erosion. It prevents coastal erosion pretty nicely. It's not a completely foolproof solution. It doesn't um, work forever. You will certainly need to replace the sand over time because it will be eroded away or transported away, I should say, by processes like longshore drift. But beaches are a really good natural solution to coastal erosion. Let's have a look at the next ones. The next one is called a sea wall. And essentially, it's exactly that. It's a wall that keeps the sea out. It stops the sea from getting onto the land. It's a really solid concrete barrier, normally concrete anyway, um, that prevents the sea getting onto the land. Now, if we look at the shape of this seawall, it's been designed specifically to reflect the energy of the sea back out towards the sea. And I'll show you how that works. The wave comes in from either, you know, kind of the top or the bottom. It could come in from the bottom down here. But either way, it's gonna hit this curve. And when it does, it's gonna to start to return that energy back out to the sea. So we call it a wave return seawall. This seawall has also been fitted with rock armor, these huge big boulders that have been placed in front of the seawall. And just like the beach, they absorb lots of the energy from the sea's waves. So the next one we're gonna have a look at is what we call groins. And the way groins work is they prevent and they stop that process of longshore drift that we've learned about in the past. So if we imagine this is our beach in the yellow with the land behind it in green and the sea as blue. Groins are built along the beach but they actually stick out into the sea. 
So longshore drift will move material, in this case it's moving it from left to right, and we can see that's because, or we know that's because, the beach is much wider on the right hand side than it is on the left. So by building groins, we're putting these sort of walls in perpendicular to the coast, at right angles to the coast. And what will happen is over time, longshore drift will keep happening, but as the material moves from left to right, it will get stuck on the groins. And so we'll have a beach that looks a bit like this. And just like with beach nourishment, we're increasing the size of the beach, and so we're creating a really good natural barrier for the land behind. Now one problem with this is, as you can see in the picture, the sand builds up on one side of the groin, but on the other side there is a gap. And that in itself can be a bit of a problem, but a much bigger problem is that these groins are working really well at stopping the sand moving. Well, further down the beach to the right, there's not going to be as much sand. And so the areas to the right of these groins are going to experience more erosion because the sand that would be being sort of passed down the circuit isn't going to be there because the groins are stopping it. And so areas to the right of these groins, as we're looking at them, are going to experience more erosion. Um, here is another picture. You can see how the groins are working. The sand is building up. So in this picture, we know that longshore drift is actually moving the material from the bottom of the photo towards the top over there. This next one, it, you might think it's a seawall because we've got that rock armour, but it's not. This is similar, it's called riprap. And riprap is just huge boulders placed on the sea. And again, like the beach, they're quite good because they can move around, they can absorb the energy of the sea. And provided you pick the correct rocks, really hard ones, it can be a very strong and solid um, form of coastal engineering. This next one is called dune regeneration. It's a bit like beach nourishment, but what you do is actually putting plants into the sand dunes behind the beach and fencing off or roping off areas so people don't walk on them. What this does is increases the strength of the sand dunes. The plants actually hold all the soil and sand together. And by stopping people walking on it, you're actually preventing erosion. As we've mentioned in the past, people can cause erosion when they walk around with their feet. Well, by roping off areas, creating proper pathways, you are stopping people eroding the land. The last one is maybe the most controversial, or the one that perhaps is disliked the most by some people, and that is called managed retreat. And managed retreat leads to pictures like this, where we've got marshes being created. The way it works is like so. If we imagine this is our area of the coast, when we have managed retreat, we basically give up on an area of the coast and we say, that bit we're not worried about, that bit of the coast we're just going to give up on and we're going to retreat away from it, we're going to run away from it almost. So the government or the council or the pe people in charge of the area of the coast will draw a line and say okay everything to the left of that red line if the sea wants to erode it it can do and we'll build new defenses on that red line and that will be our new coastline if the sea gets that far. Now this is obviously a problem for all the people in the you know towns and villages by the coast because this whole yellow area that I've shaded in may well fall into the sea. And that obviously upsets quite a lot of people. However, there are some people who argue, well, if the land is eroding away very quickly, it's not worth spending lots of money trying to protect the land if we know it's going to fall into the sea anyway, if we know it's going to erode away anyway. It's not worth trying to protect it. So actually, if we retreat back to an area where we can protect the land by the red line, then we'll be able to do that. What's more, as I mentioned, we get things like these salt marshes being created, which can be really good natural habitats and can lead to things like tourism in some cases. But it is a very controversial solution. 
and it can be very expensive having to move all these people uh, to other areas of the country or finding them new homes or perhaps the farmland close to the sea is going to be lost which means that businesses are going to suffer which could be an economic problem so there are a variety of different ways of managing coastal erosion and I've talked a lot about the problems linked to managed retreat but there are problems with all the different forms of coastal management if we go back to say riprap where it doesn't look particularly pretty having these huge giant boulders at the coastline and you can see actually they've had to put up warning signs because they're quite dangerous to walk on you're more likely to slip and trip and hurt yourself things like groins as we mentioned will create more erosion further down the coast and something like a seawall whilst it's really effective is very expensive and also doesn't look particularly nice if you want to go to that area on your holiday so all these different forms of coastal management have got problems they have benefits but they've got problems too there isn't really one clear solution to some people for some people there is and you're going to find out about that in the later stages of this lesson so on your table I want you to fill in the different columns now the information you need to do this is going to be in this video and is going to be on show my homework as a PDF so if you'd like to when I've finished explaining this task you can stop watching the video and you can just complete the work using the information that's on show my homework but you need to complete all the different rows and once you've done that, if you've got time, I'd like you to answer the question of which is the best and why. So as I say, this is going to be the end of the teaching section of the lesson. The rest of this video is just going to be the information sheets that you need. So if you'd like to, you can stop watching and leave. If you want to see the information on here, just keep watching and we'll go through the next bits of information. Okay, so here is the first slide about a seawall. I'm going to leave it here for about 10-15 seconds and then go on to the next slide and I'll do that the whole way through. Okay, so that's all the information sheets uh, for the task. Remember, you can always go back and rewatch bits, pause it to get more information if you need to. That's absolutely not a problem. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope you found it really useful and informative as well. See you next time.